This PC build series is brought to you by Antec, Apotop, and Patriot Memory. Hi everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and it's time for part 15 of my $500 triple boot PC build series. And for part 14 we will be fixing the Clover bootloader so that it's being detected by the motherboard properly. A big shout out goes to Fusion71AU from the Insanely Mac forum who was able to help me out with this. So the software that we need is called Easy UEFI and this allows us to modify the boot options for the BIOS. Once you've downloaded it, open it up and you'll have your boot options right there. We need to add a new one, so when we're creating a new boot entry, just make sure you choose Linux or other OS. Pick our target partition, which is the very first one, as that is our EFI partition. Then you could go ahead and give it a title, and now we have to find out the file path for the EFI file, which is our EFI drive, the EFI folder, Clover, and then the 64-bit Clover EFI file. And now you're finished. And that's basically all we had to do to fix the boot process, which did take a while for me to figure out, but I'm just glad somebody was able to help me out with that. And as you can see in the F11 boot menu, Clover is now here. So in the BIOS, I went ahead and changed the default bootloader to Clover, so that Clover is always the first one that comes up. That way, we could use Clover to boot Windows, Linux, and OS X side by side. And as you can see, once we chose the Clover bootloader option, it went up to Clover just like we saw and there is no USB flash drive plugged in to boot from. So everything is now being booted from the single SSD. And we are able to customize Clover a bit. There are a number of different themes to try. Here we are back in OS X taking a look at the different themes to choose from. I went with the basic orange theme, but there are a number of other ones to choose from. I like this one because it's very simple and straightforward. You can see that the theme was able to work just fine, although it is showing some extra boot entries, which I did eventually fix for the most part. There's one extra boot entry that we don't really need that I can't figure out how to hide or anything like that. It's a little bit annoying, but otherwise everything is now 100% finished. I can boot inside of Windows 10 perfectly. I can boot into Ubuntu perfectly. And of course I can boot into OS 10 Yosemite just fine as well. So that is about it with part 14 and the entire build is pretty much 100% finished. All that's left now is part 15 which is where I talk about the gaming performance a little bit and the frame rates that I could get within certain games and a little conclusion to sort of wrap everything up. So stay tuned for part 15.